In this video we're going to take a look at solving triangle problems. So there's three formulas here that we need from GCSE Maths in our toolkit for solving triangle problems. To begin with here, let's take a look at the cosine rule. So for the cosine rule here, remember these are all from GCSE Maths, so they shouldn't be new to you, um, but we might need to recall this definition here. So we've got a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cosine a. Okay, like so. So that's the cosine rule. Now, if we know the length of all three sides, then we can rearrange this to work out the cosine with the angle A here. So I can write cos A here, and that's going to be equal to B squared plus C squared minus A squared, all divided by 2BC. Okay, all divided by 2BC there. But remember, we need to know all three sides there to use the um, rearranged form there. Okay, so that's the cosine rule. Let's just box that off here. That's the cosine rule. So let's just underline that. The next one that we have then is the sine rule. So for the sine rule then, there's two ways of expressing this formula here. And it depends if we're looking for a missing side or a missing angle. If we're looking for a missing side then, then the way we express this formula here is A over sine A is equal to b over sine b and that's equal to c over sine c there okay so that's for a missing um, side there so for a missing side now if we're looking for a missing angle then we just look at the reciprocal of this so for a missing angle it's going to be sine a sine a over a, that's going to be equal to sine b over b, which is going to be equal to, you guessed it, sine c over c there. Okay, like I said, that's for a missing angle. Okay, so that's for a missing angle. So let's note this here. So again, let's just box this off here. So that's the sine rule. And then finally, we need the formula for the area of a triangle. So area of a triangle. So this formula here allows us to work out the area of any triangle. Okay. And the formula is that area, which you could just call A here, is equal to a half AB sine C there. Okay. So those are the three formulas that we need there in our toolkit. But using these three formulas, we can solve triangle problems, okay? So do take a note of these. We are going to use these throughout um, this video and obviously any questions that come up in exams with these um, type of questions, okay? So now let's move on. Let's take a look at a couple of practice questions here. Taking a look at question one here to begin with. So we've been given the triangle ABC. We know that AB is equal to X plus three centimeters. We know that AC is X centimeters, and we know that the angle BAC is 30 degrees. We're also told that the area of the triangle is 4 centimeters squared. And for part A, we're just asked to show then that X satisfies the equation here of X squared plus 3X minus 16 is equal to zero. And to begin with here, what I would do is I would do a quick diagram. It doesn't have to be perfect. But I would definitely recommend just doing a diagram here just so we can see the triangle that we're looking at. So if I join these up here, this will give me my triangle ABC. Okay, so it looks something like that. So what do we know about this triangle here? Well, we know that AB is X plus three centimeters. That's this length here. That's X plus three centimeters. We know that AC is X centimeters. That's this length here at the bottom. And then finally, we know that the angle BAC is 30 degrees. So that would be this angle here. So from B to A to C, this angle between those is 30 degrees. Okay. We're also told that the area of the triangle is 4 centimeters squared. So as soon as I see that here, this is important because that's telling me here that we need to use the fact um, or the formula here for the area of any triangle. So for part A, we just want to show that X satisfies this quadratic equation here. So let's just recall the formula here for the area of any triangle. So A is equal to a half. Uh, sorry, um, AB sine C. Okay, so half AB sine C. 
Now, in this case here, if I just think about this triangle that we've got, I'm going to have to change my formula ever so slightly because what I've been given here, rather than sine C, we've got sine A here because this is the angle A. Okay, so across from here, this will be little A. Across from here, this will be little B. And across from here, this will be little C. Okay, so rather than using a half A, B, sine C, I just need to change A and C here. Okay, so I'm just going to change wherever I've got an A to a C, wherever I've got a C to an A. Okay, so in this case, then I need to change my formula here. It's now going to become a half. This A here changes to a C, so it's going to be BC, so a half BC. And then we change the sine C to be sine A. So that's the formula that I nearly gave uh, to start with. Um, obviously, I can use these interchangeably. Okay, so that's not a problem here. So in that case, then, I just need to substitute B, C, and then sine A into this formula here, and that will give us the area. But we also know that the area is 4 here, okay, or 4 centimeters squared. So let's put all that together then. So the area here is 4, and that's equal to a half times B, which is X, so a half X, then times that by C, which is X plus 3, okay, and then we times that by sine A. Okay, so A in this case is 30 degrees, so that's going to be times by sine of 30 degrees. Okay, well, sine of 30 here is a half. So I've got a half times a half there, so that's going to be 1 over 4. I've got that 4 is equal to 1 over 4, x times x plus 3 here. Okay, so all I've done between this step here and this step here is just use the fact that sine 30 is equal to a half. So I've got a half times a half there, giving me 1 over 4. What I want to do now is get rid of this fraction here, 1 over 4. So to do that, I'm going to times both sides here by 4. Okay. In that case then, 4 times 4 is 16. And that's going to be equal to x times x plus 3. Like so. And we're getting pretty close to the solution here. What I'm going to do now is expand this bracket here. So I'm going to get 16 is equal to x squared plus 3x, okay? And then finally, if we want to set this equal to zero, I need to subtract 16 off both sides. So therefore, x squared plus 3x minus 16 is equal to zero, which is exactly what we needed to show here, so as required, okay? There we have it, so that's our solution to part A. Hopefully not too bad. Now for part B, it's a hence or otherwise, so obviously we need to use our answer here in part A to help us. And it says find the value of x, giving your answer to three significant figures here. So, in this case here, with it being a hence or otherwise, we don't even need to be able to actually solve part A to get to this point here. We can just use this quadratic here, okay? Because what I want to do now is just solve this quadratic, okay? Now if we check this here, the first thing we normally do is check whether this factorizes. In this case, it doesn't factorize. So two ways of going about this now, we either complete the square or we use the quadratic formula. For this question here, I'm just going to use the quadratic formula. So let's just recall the formula here for the quadratic formula. So x is equal to minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. That's all over 2a. Okay. So just substituting in here appropriately. Um, well, obviously in this case, A will be 1, B will be 3, and then C here will be minus 16. Okay, we're just doing it for this quadratic here. So X is equal to minus B, so it's going to be minus 3, plus or minus the square root of B squared. So B is 3, that's going to be 9, 3 squared is 9, minus, so I'm doing 4, times A, which is 1, times by C, which is minus 16. Okay, and this is all over 2a, so 2 times 1 giving me 2 there. So let's just keep simplifying here. So obviously I've got minus 3 plus or minus. So I've got the square root of 9 minus, so 4 times 1 is 4, times by minus 16. So let's just put all this together here. Square root of 9. So 4 times 16, so that's going to be 64. So it's going to be minus minus 64, so I've got 9. Plus 64 there. That's all over 2. Simplify here. I'm going to get minus 3 plus or minus the square root of 73. That's all over 2. Now in this case here, x clearly must be positive, okay, because it's this length here at the bottom. 
So in that case then, I'm only gonna take the positive solution here. Obviously, if I take the negative, that would be minus three minus the square root of 73 over two. And that would be clearly negative. So in that case, we just need to take x here being equal to minus three plus the square root of 73 here all over two. Okay, now I quickly put this into my calculator here. So minus three plus the square root of 73, all divided by two here. And if we give this to three significant figures then, what I'm gonna get here is 2.77 there. Okay, and we're working in centimeters. It's gonna be centimeters there, okay? And there we have it, so that's our solution to question one. Taking a look at one more question here to finish with, we've been given Tom's garden, which is in the shape of a triangle, which he denotes as the triangle ABC. Now he measures the individual lengths of his garden and he obtains the following results. So in the triangle ABC, we're told that AB is equal to six meters, BC is equal to four meters, and then AC is 2.5 meters. Now we're asked to find the area of the garden. So to begin with here, just like we did with the previous question, I'm just gonna start by drawing a quick diagram. So I'll call that A, call that B, and we call that C here. So from A to B, we're told that that's six meters there. That's six meters. From B to C, that's four meters. That's four meters. And then finally from A to C, we're told that that's 2.5 meters, okay? So if we want the area of this garden here, obviously we need to use the formula then for the area of any triangle. So that's gonna be A is equal to a half AB sine C, okay? Now what I've got here is a triangle where I know the length here of all three sides, but I don't have any angles. So in that case, I'm gonna to have to make use of the cosine rule, okay? So we're also gonna to need to use the cosine rule here. Let's write down the cosine rule. Now, the most basic form here of the cosine rule or the form that you're normally um, gonna see first is the expression for the missing side length. So that's normally given as a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared minus two bc cosine a. And that's all, um, and that's our expression there for the cosine rule for a missing length. Now clearly we've got all three lengths here so I don't need this, but I need to rearrange it so that it's in form here, or it's in the form of the cosine of one of these sides. Now it's up to you how you go about this. Um, I'm gonna be lazy here. So rather than kind of changing this so it's cosine of C, because obviously we need the angle C here, okay? Or oh, that's what it is given us. But clearly, just like we did with the previous question, we can change that, okay? So what I'm gonna change that to in a moment is gonna be sine A, okay? Just like we did with the previous question. So if I rearrange this here so that cosine A is the, um, the subject, what I'm going to get then is cosine of A or cos A is going to be equal to B squared plus C squared minus the A squared. And we divide this here by 2BC. Okay. So that should hopefully be nice and straightforward. Now in this case then, I just need to label A, B and C here. So then we go from the opposite side. So if this is A here, this will be little a. Um, if this is B, this will be a little b. And if this is C, that will be little c. Okay. So in that case then, put all this together then. So cosine of A is going to be equal to B squared. So that's 2.5 squared. Plus A squared, which is going to be, uh, oh, sorry, plus C squared, which is going to be 6 squared there plus six squared, and now we minus a squared, so minus four squared. And this is all divided by two BC. So two times by B, which is 2.5, and times that by C, which is six. So two times by 2.5 times by six, okay? So all I need to do now is evaluate this on my calculator here. It's up to you if you do the uh, numerator and the denominator separately. If I just put it all, all in at once here, so 2.5 squared, plus six squared minus four squared. I'm gonna get 26.25 divided by, so two times by 2.5 times it by six. I'm gonna get 26.25 over 30. Okay, so if we want A here, this angle, um, then clear what I need to do here is take the inverse cosine of both sides. Okay, in that case then, A here is gonna be 
cos inverse of 26.25 all over 30. Okay, so again, just use your calculator here. So cos inverse of 26.25 divided by 30, divided by 30. So what I get here is 28.9, 28 28.955 there. Okay, so I'm going to keep it to this degree of accuracy here. So what that's giving me is this angle here. Okay, so that's 28.955 degrees there. Okay, so what I now need to do is use this here and change um, my expression here for the area. Now, I'm going to be careful here because obviously I've said that A is equal to a half, A, B, sine C, and I've just found the angle here, A. So let's just be slightly careful here. So I'm going to change my formula for the area, so I'm going to call it area rather than A. So that's going to be equal now. So I've got sine A in this case now. So I'm going to change this sine C to be sine A. And wherever there's an A, change that to be a C. So what I've got now is a half BC sine A. So just like we did with the previous question, should hopefully be nice and straightforward. And don't forget that you can do this. You can use them interchangeably. So in that case, then just substituting in uh, BC and the sine A here. We're going to get a half times B. That's going to be 2.5 times up by C, which is six. And then we times up by sine A. Okay, so sine, in this case, of 28.955, 28.955, okay? So all I need to do now is just put all of this into my calculator here. So 0 0.5 times 2.5, times up by six, and then times up by sine, 28.955. And in this case then, what I'm gonna get here especially if I give this to one decimal place like we're asked for, I'm going to get 3.6 then meters squared. Okay, so 3.6 meters squared. Okay, and there we have it. So that's our solution to that question. Just a note here, it doesn't matter which way we start um, with the cosine rule. And obviously the fact that I've changed that to be, or use the fact that this is cosine A, you can change that to be cos C. Okay, obviously you'd have to change this original expression here. That is absolutely fine. Obviously, and then you can just use the original expression here for the area of the triangle. It's completely up to you, but you should get the same solution here of 3.6, no matter which way you go about it. Okay, so do take that into account, um, that you can do it in a couple of different ways. But no matter which way you do it, you should get this here as the area of the garden. Okay, and there we have it. So that's our solution to question two. And that brings, brings us to the end of this video on solving triangle problems.